A warm welcome to today's talk, Sunday the 19th of February. Now I'm afraid I have to inform you that we've been well and truly stitched up in terms of ever coming to understand uh, viral origins. The World Health Organization made a big fuss about its phase one report a couple of years back. Basically nothing's happened since and they've now quietly shelved the idea for phase two, thinking that everyone's forgotten. Well, I haven't forgotten. One good thing, I think we can sort of fairly definitively now tie down the date of the uh, origin of the virus, um, SARS-CoV-2, at least as far as uh, the Chinese authorities knew it. So the entire Wuhan Institute uh, virus database was taken offline on the 12th of September 2019. So I think from this we can assume that the Chinese um, local authorities at least knew uh, that there was a SARS coronavirus 2 uh, in, on the 12th of September 2019. I think that looks fairly, uh, fairly convincing. We know this from a parliamentary question. You know, European Parliament, 12th of September, took its entire viral database offline. Uh, the renewed publication of the virus database will be an important step towards clarifying the origin of the current uh, corona pandemic. But of course, this has not happened. This is a complete scandal and a disgrace. Here's the paper where that is documented. So, you know, it's not me making it up. Now, quite a bit of the information from today's paper will be taken from this article here in the, in the journal Nature, looking at uh, the WHO abandoning plans uh, for a phase two and there's a lot of uh, useful uh, information there as well so let's uh, get on with some of uh, what it's actually saying quietly abandoned plans dear me M marie van kirkhove epidemiologist she's you often see her on the news uh, there is no phase two <laughs> we were promised a phase two who really we we're promised a phase two. We're not getting one, so there is no phase two. Uh, plan for the f plan for phase studies, in reference to talking about the plan for phase studies, that plan has now changed. I think we can agree with that. The politics across the world of this really hampered the progress. Understand the origins of the virus, yes, but you're the World Health Organization. Uh, we'll accept that it's true, but it's not a good enough excuse. This is simply not good enough. Uh, Dr. Ted Dross, the head of the WHO, or quite pally with China, he's failed. He should go. Give someone else a chance. This is just completely, uh, completely preposterous. World Health Organization's quietly shelved the phase, scientific investigation of the origins of SARS coronavirus 2. It's been quietly shelved, and now it's not going to happen. Um, the implications of this, of course, are massive. What about the next pandemic? Um, what the heck are they working on now? Um, the next pandemic will probably come from a lab leak. What do we know about how this one started? Officially, uh, nothing. Um, it's just a complete disgrace. Unofficially, of course, coincidentally, the pandemic started 11 miles from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Coincidentally, they've been studying that type of bat. But the really convincing bit to me is... That if you take previous pandemics, um, H1N1, H1N5, various various influenza pandemics, or if you take the SARS coronavirus one, what happened was that that those viruses got into the animal population and they geographically spread. So you got a pop up of SARS coronavirus one here, and a few hundred miles away, you got another pop up of SARS coronavirus one uh, there back in 2003, 2019. That didn't happen. It all came from one place, Wuhan which just happens to be next to the Institute of Virology. And we'll give further inf uh, evidence as we go along as well. Um, this is not, does not have the fingerprints of a uh, natural uh, pandemic because we know what natural pandemics look like and this one basically uh, doesn't. Uh, uh, virologist uh, Angela Ramsonson from the University of Saskatchewan uh, basically saying they can't get access to China. So their hands are really tight. True, but they are the World Health Organization and they really need to do something about it. Um, use their, Dr. Tedros could perhaps use his links in China. 
uh, or at least publish a report that, that acknowledges this problem openly instead of just going rid of it on the quiet. Let's have some honesty here. Let's have some integrity here. Let's get rid of this hypocrisy. Phase one report was in March. Now, this is the phase one report here. Um, it's, all, it's, all, it's all still online. You can see the whole thing there. That's the phase one report. Uh, check check it out for yourself. Full document there. Um, download it, peruse, read at your leisure. Um, the presence of SARS coronavirus two has not been detected through sample testing of bats or wildlife across China. Well, if it was a natural infection, you would have expected that too. So again, that is not typical of a natural infection. More than eighty thousand wildlife and uh, poultry samples checked from thirty one provinces across China. Not so much as a peep from the virus. Again, indicating it is not endemic in wildlife or in farmed animals. Um, now you can't argue from the from the lack of evidence, from the lack of evidence, of course. But it is, if it had been there, you would have expected it to come up. Or, or you, I think we can assume the Chinese have looked for it. If it had been there, it would have come up by uh, by now. No positive results at all for antibodies, nucleic acid, nothing before the outbreak in China. So it does not appear to be a natural virus. Therefore, how can it be a zoonotic spillover? Now, this report uh, published in uh, March, uh, March 2021, a direct zoonotic spillover is considered to be a possible to likely pathway, they're saying. Um, I'm not sure I agree with that. I'm going to give that a cross. I don't agree with that. I don't think that is likely. For the reasons that we've just uh, the reasons that we've just given, uh, introduced through an intermediate host is considered to be a likely pathway. Well, why hasn't the host been found? The host should have been found by now, and it hasn't. Introduction through cold food. The idea that it came in through a cold food into China uh, is this one very likely? Let me think about it. I've thought about it. It's ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous idea. Introduction through a laboratory incident was considered to be an extremely unlikely pathway uh, in, by the original report. Um, but there you go. Um, the, the, these three, these top two have basically been excluded, in my view. Or, or the Chinese authorities have had two years to come up with something and they haven't. Um, that one's ridiculous. When you've excluded the uh, improbable... Uh, whatever's left, no matter how impossible, is likely to be true. To misquote Conan Doyle. For each of these possible uh, pathways of emergence, the joint team conducted a qualitative risk analysis. So they've actually tried to give a quantitative result here uh, in saying how likely it is with a qualitative analysis. Laughable research technique. WHO, laughable any first year student knows that that is uh, you can't derive quantitative data from qualitative studies. Um, the team prioritized further studies that would potentially increase knowledge, but of course now we know that's simply not going to happen. Now in 2021, they promised further analysis, spatial and temporal correlations. Yeah, that would have been good, but of course it's now not going to happen. Assessment of wild animal markets in and around Wuhan would have been good, but it's not going to happen. Analysis of trade and history of trade of animals in uh, other products and other markets would have been good, but it's not going to happen. Uh, particularly in markets with epidemiological links to Wuhan, not going to happen. Um, they also said it um, be good to look at early human cases or sequence data, not going to happen. Survey of susceptible animals in farms in Southeast Asia. Now, that would have been a really good idea, uh, but that's not going to happen either. Uh, widespread livestock testing would have been good, but that's not going to happen. Uh, wise, widespread uh, testing of wildlife throughout China would have been good, not going to happen, because they could have looked for viral sequences and antibodies, not going to happen. Uh, audits of labs in the area would have been, of course, top priority, not going to happen. Convene a global expert group to support future joint trajectory research on the origin of the epidemic. WHO doesn't seem to be doing that. Um, you sense my frustration. I'm sure you are sharing it. Um, now, a lot of this is probably uh, problems in China. This is China's foreign ministry. The second phase should not focus on pathways um, 
on pathways that the mission report had already deemed to be unlikely. So that's a recent report. So in other words, because it was deemed unlikely in 2021, we should not bother looking at that. The, the laboratory um, leak theory is so ludicrous it can be uh, uh, completely ruled out, so don't even bother looking at it. What kind of science is this? Well, it's not. It's the inverse of science, isn't it? This is the antithesis of science. This is exactly what science doesn't do. Science does not say, well, these are the answers I'm including. These are the answers I'm excluding. Let's go and look for the proof. That's the antithesis. Science collects data, then makes conclusions. It's just, um, it's, it's, it's the hypocrisy of science. Um, researchers uh, are, un uh, summer work is going on, efforts to trap bats in regions that are bordering China to look for sequences. And we know that the bats sort of northern Thailand, southern China are very, very similar. Uh, but this idea to, to try and blame uh, pangolins as the intermediate species, well, that was com completely laughable as well. Um, pangolins are one of the more abused species, probably be extinct the way it's going soon, but um, they provide uh, an essential part of the ecosystem, but it certainly wasn't them that was the intermediate species. Uh, testing of water, uh, so, so yeah, testing of water and blood samples would be good, but we've pretty well run out of those now. Um Gerald Kirsch, National Institutes of Diseases from Infectious Diseases from Boston. The, or, the original investigation was poorly handled by the global community. Poorly handled by the global community. Uh, Gerald Kirsch, National Emerging Infectious Diseases Laboratories, Boston. Poorly handled by the global community. Poorly handled by China. Poorly handled by the WHO. The WHO should have been relentless in creating positive worker relations with the Chinese authorities. If it was being stonewalled, it should have been honest about that. It's just the constant hypocrisy. So poorly handled by everyone, basically. But but there is hope. Uh, to uh, Thea Fisher, public health virologist at the University of Copenhagen, one of the initial team members that went to Wuhan, I still hope that progress will be made. Hope away, I'm afraid I doubt it. Completely outrageous situation. We've been stitched up. We're never going to know for sure. The scientific evidence has already been disposed of. The databases have already been closed down or deleted. Um, way back in the 12th of September um, 2019. Why didn't we know about these databases being closed down earlier? Um, it, it's all, it's all, um, shall we say, uh, irregular. Cynics might say suspicious. Right, just to finish, this is interesting. Um, I got this off Twitter, and I'm afraid I don't know how to attribute it, so my apologies to whatever brilliant person create, created this. Yummy fruit, this is, these are presumably are Stone Age men, uh, but this one dies because it's not yummy fruit falls over now these clever people know that correlation does not equal causation so it looks like they've eaten it as well because you know what sometimes correlation does indicate causation we can't infer that all, always but sometimes it does for example let me think of an example difficult to think of an example of course um, can't think of any recent examples at all but uh, an older example would be there was a correlation between smoking and lung cancer, between smoking and heart disease, between asbestos and mesothelioma, between cotton and bisidosis, between inhaling stone dust and silicosis. We, we, we could go up, we could go on. Um, pity I can't think of any more recent examples, but, but th there you go. There you go. We're never going to find out. It's a stitch up. And this has got massive implications because the next pandemic could come in exactly the same way. What the heck are they working on now? You know, if, 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 if you increase the transmissibility of a virus through repeat breeding experiments and you end up with a virus which is a higher function than the one that you had at the start and you say that's not gain of function when function has been gained, it's just playing silly games with languages. It's so patently gain of function. But we'll never know. Or we'll never have the scientific smoking gun. Unless it's there already and we're just not being told, of course. But we don't want to get into conspiracy theories, do we?
Thank you for watching.